everybody. It's Joe from the Jeep Shop. How are you doing this afternoon? As you can see here, we're working on uh, air conditioning and all the fun things associated with that. So, uh, Jeep here yesterday, one under uh, surgery, had the AC compressor, orifice tube, and receiver dryer replaced. And uh, today we're pulling a vacuum on to uh, receive, uh, to get all the uh, condensation and air out of the system. And right now we're just kind of uh, the waiting game for uh, making sure that our uh, repairs are uh, accurate. And they were made right by the mechanic, which is me. So I'm um, stuck Hey everybody, it's Joe from the Jeep Shop. How you guys doing today? It's a Memorial Day weekend and uh, the theme of this video is keeping cool, baby. So just replaced it, you can't see it here, but I just replaced the AC compressor. It's down in there because the clutch went bad. Eh, 210,000 miles, you're gonna expect that. So let me give you an update on kind of where I'm at here. So uh, AC compressor and clutch has been replaced. The uh, AC orifice tube has been replaced as well as the receiver dryer. Uh, and you get that kit from Rock Odo, it was like 250 bucks. Um, get the work done in the shop. Uh, that's a whole bunch of money. If you can do it yourself, save some time. And it's a lot of fun too. Uh, Harbor Freight Special for the uh, air manifolds. Real, uh, I think it was like 35 bucks, and then the uh, pump, good old AutoZone, and it's a free tool rental. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, evacuate the air out of the system. Uh, I took it to a shop to get the AC Freon uh, evacuated, so it was depressurized. I can go in and do what I got to do, and uh, I'm going to give this a try here. I've done a whole lot of stuff with this Jeep, but I've never really done any AC work, so this should be pretty fun, actually. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, so to start off with, um, all of your knobs here, your low side knob, your high side knob are all closed. And then your couplers on your low side service port and your high side service port are all closed. And counterclockwise is closed on the couplers and clockwise on the manifold. So what we'll do is we're going to draw a vacuum for like 35-40 minutes, get all the air, get all the moisture out of the system, and then we're going to do a, uh, a recharge with the AC system. So. Uh, let's get this all hooked up and we'll crank it up. All right. Okay, so as you can see now, we have the vacuum pump hooked up. Like I said, this was a rental tool from AutoZone. And the on-off switch is right there. And like I said, we have a uh, closed, closed. And now what we're going to do is open the service ports. So this is currently closed. So we're going to open this by turning it counter, uh, turning it clockwise. Just turn until it says open. Same thing with the high pressure side. Sorry, you can't see it. Again, I'm not starting the motor so the pipes, so the, uh, the hoses can be in the engine bay. So open, open. Okay, we want these closed, closed. And of course, as you can see, there is no Freon in the system right now. That's because we had the system evacuated yesterday at the store, at the shop at the store, like I did at a grocery store. Oh boy. So, uh, Freon's really bad, nasty for the environment. Not as bad as that R12 stuff, which punched a hole in the ozone. Uh, this stuff will, uh, will do some nasty things too, but uh, be a good steward of the environment and uh, leave no trace and uh, get that stuff evacuated. Just don't let it air out in the, uh, in the open. So we're gonna turn on the uh, pump here. Quiet little pump. As you can see right now, nothing is going on because I have these closed. So we're gonna start drawing a vacuum. Open up both sides. And as you can see right now, it's starting to draw a vacuum. Okay. Now we recommend letting this go on for like a half hour or so. And the little steam you see coming up is basically just uh, condensation. So right now it's just drawing a vacuum. And uh, we'll check back in about a half hour or so. Okay, so it's been about a half hour, and you can see it pulled uh, 30 vacuum. And what we're gonna do now is just turn it off here at the manifold. So we're gonna turn these clockwise. Snug them up good. 
Don't touch the ones on the service side or the high pressure side. And we'll just turn the vacuum off. Okay. So now to verify our repairs, we are going to let this sit for about a half hour, 45 minutes. Go grab a cup of coffee, go do something, cut the lawn, clean the bathroom, do whatever you gotta do. Uh, but we're gonna give this some time. We're gonna wanna see this remain at 30. That means we have no leaks and we're ready for the next step. And I do hope that uh, that stays at 30 because that would make me quite happy. All right, so we'll see you in about a half hour. Okay, boy, this is exciting. Great news, the vacuum has held and it's been about a good 45 minutes. I actually came out here a little while ago and checked it and ran a little bit more of a vacuum. So I've probably done about 45 minutes of a vacuum pull uh, and this has been sitting for about a half hour or so. Had myself a couple pretzels, made myself some coffee, had some water, so I kind of made a nice afternoon. So look, this is great. So now you're like, great, what's the next step? Aha, so glad you asked. So the next step is refrigerant. So one of the things you're gonna have to make sure you do some research on is how much refrigerant and what kind does your vehicle take? Uh, most likely it's gonna be R134A, the R12, um, really is a uh, that's old school and not a lot of people have it and it's very hard to find and pretty much no cars are used any unless it's early 90s and uh, that's not really happening so you are going to be looking for R134A the only refrigerant out there in the stores so now we need to recharge the system um, not on this vehicle uh, but usually there are little stickers somewhere around here up on the hood that'll give you the quantity of refrigerant that you need, the type, the uh, type of oil, the, you need refrigerant oil too. So when I replaced the AC compressor down there somewhere, uh, it came pre-oiled. So I don't need to add any additional oil in the AC system. The oil, the PAG, uh, this Jeep takes PAG 46 oil and it just basically lubricates the entire system. Uh, the pump, the lines and everything. It, it does what it's supposed to do. Um, since my AC compressor came pre-oiled uh, I just am going to run it like that and we're good to go I did however put uh, let me let me let me check that I did however put a little bit of AC oil uh, PAG 46 oil in the receiver dryer uh, my service manual did say it needed a few ounces so just so it wasn't dry I did put a couple ounces of oil in there so what we'll do next is we're going to take the uh, AC yellow line we're going to take it off the vacuum and then we're going to charge it up to this and uh, we'll go over those steps in a minute. Uh, one of the things you're going to want to buy from the parts store is the uh, adapter that screws onto the top of the bottle of refrigerant and then this will also screw into your yellow line right there. So we'll go through that. But basically uh, it's real cheap, it's like five or six bucks, that's what it looks like. And there's a little, oh geez, step aside, look out. There's a little nozzle thing that pierces the top of that, so when you screw this down, it'll pierce a hole in that and allow the refrigerant to flow through. When you screw on the nozzle, you want to ensure that it is fully uh, to the top position uh, so it doesn't puncture it while this is exposed, because if it is punctured while you're screwing this down, not, uh, Freon will come out of here, and that's not a lot of fun. It'll probably surprise you a little bit. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure this is all the way to the top. Self-explanatory, but you know, we just always want to make sure try to give you good information so let's connect this to the yellow so our can of refrigerant is connected and it is again the can is not punctured that little needle is all the way up to the top and now we're going to go into the uh, vehicle and start okay. up. you'll need to go in and start your start your vehicle you don't want it on recirculating just want it on regular air conditioning you turn it on the medium the AC has to be on so this switch has to be on in order for that signal to go to the compressor to engage the clutch once that pressure starts building up air conditioning on cold turn that on and your AC button is off okay next up is you have you have punctured your can and you have opened up the valve to allow the Freon to go through this is now live and now to allow Freon to go into your system you just want to open up the low side, do not touch the high side. Freon is going in. And that compressor should click on. Pressure 
are starting to build on the high side. Again, this is closed, this is open. Okay, everybody, as you can see, the AC compressor is starting to cycle, building up pressure. Show you what that looks like. happen is it'll start catching back and forth, it'll start cycling, building up pressure, and once it has enough pressure, it'll stay on. Got our can of Freon just kind of sitting right here doing its thing. High pressure building. Again, always feet from the low side. This has to be open. That has to be open. This remains closed. And it's just about empty. And it's going to leak. Oh boy. these trash cans will make a handy desk. Let's see, we're starting to get some cool air. Oh, oh baby, that's nice and cold. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah. All right, so what's going to happen is the uh, AC compressor is just going to continue to fill. The system's going to do its job. Building up pressure. Cycling, and uh, once we get a full full setup, we'll, uh, we'll get back in the video. But you can see how the systems are all pressurized and starting to cycle through. Okay, so just to kind of wrap it up here, uh, final product. We have our low side at about 40 pounds, and high high side is a little over uh, 200. So. Based upon the ambient temperature outside, there's a range between you know, 30, 40, and 50 uh, pounds of pressure. Uh, it's not too humid today, so uh, 40 is about right. I just felt the uh, vents on the inside. Let me tell you what, man, that air is cold as can be. So a uh, little bit of that, little bit left in that can. I shut it off because uh, about 24, 24 ounces of coolant, uh, 24 ounces of antifreeze. Look at that AC compressor just turning and burning. So look, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. Gave you a little idea of uh, things to look out for, things to check. You know, having the right tools, taking your time, working through all the process and all the steps. Uh, this should be a pretty straightforward process. Um, so uh, like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, you know, please uh, feel free to let them uh, let them fly down there. I'm, uh, I won't. Uh, get my feelings hurt if you have any questions or problems with what I did. You know, I'm not a pro. Uh, I guess what you can call a, uh, a certified YouTube mechanic, right? So I uh, watched a lot of videos, read a lot of books, and uh, I'll tell you what, this is pretty easy. AC charge usually costs about $180. Uh, between the gauges, which are $30, and each can of Freon was, I think, $15. Uh, you can save yourself a lot of time and money and get the, uh, get the satisfaction of doing a job yourself. So uh, when you're cruising down the road and your Jeep is nice and cool, or your car is nice and cool, or whatever you're driving, you can think about the, what you did to get there. So hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, and take care. I'm out. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Joe from the Jeep Shop. How you doing today? Hey look, got some exciting things going on today in the shop. You can see here we're working on a uh, uh, AC compressor uh, rebuild kit. Hey everybody, it's Joe from the Jeep Shop. How you doing? 